becomes president of the United States, the Russians and other countries in the world will know they're dealing with a strong American president. The thought of Donald Trump as commander in chief scares us to death. Back now with CBS News coverage of the vice presidential debate. Let's go to our campaign 2016 correspondents. First, Nancy Cordes, who's covering the Clinton campaign. Nancy. Well, Scott, it was clear that Tim Kaine came here tonight with one overriding goal, and that was to try to force Mike Pence to defend Donald Trump on any number of issues. So over and over again, he would say, I can't believe that you could defend Donald Trump saying uh, X, Y, Z about Mexican immigrants, about nuclear proliferation, about women, about Putin. And the challenging thing for Tim Kaine is that again and again, Mike Pence wouldn't defend him, but he wouldn't disavow him either. He either ignored the comment uh, or he said that the comment hadn't happened the way that Kane described. Uh, and so it left Kane, I think, by the end of the debate, a bit at loose ends. He eventually said, look, I have now called on you six different times to defend your running mate. You're asking the American people to vote for him, yet you can't defend him yourself. At which point Pence said, you're just insulting him uh, and, you know, you're, you're exaggerating both his record and his comments. So the point that Kane came here determined to make uh, was a pretty challenging one because he and Pence at, at some point seemed to be speaking two different languages with two different sets of facts. Nancy Cordes, thanks. We're continuing to watch the vice presidential candidate speaking to the crowd there at the university in Virginia as they are uh, making their way out of the room. Major Garrett has been covering the Trump campaign from day one. Major? Scott, I can tell you, those in the Trump inner circle found in Governor Pence's performance two virtues that landed him on the ticket in the first place, an unflappable nature, calm demeanor, and a willingness and ability to prepare on policy and defend Donald Trump when the chips were down. And it is on that calm demeanor and preparation on policy. I will tell you, Scott, some in the Trump inner circle hopes rubs off on the Republican nominee in time for debate number two on Sunday. And those in the Trump campaign also thought Pence was particularly effective dealing with a couple of issues, foreign policy and the questions about civil rights and criminal justice in this country. They thought he was particularly effective dealing with that issue against Tim Kaine. And also one thing that's been injected at the late part of the debate, Scott, is Kellyanne Conway, Trump's campaign manager, accused Senator Kaine of being sexist for repeatedly interrupting and ignoring our colleague, Elaine Quijano, the debate's moderator. Well, Elaine certainly had her hands full with these two, but uh, did a terrific job keeping the debate on track. Major Garrett, thank you very much. And we're still watching the candidates, greeting uh, well-wishers there in the debate hall. Uh, there, uh, there were a lot of accusations flying back and forth about who was playing fast and loose with the facts. Well, it turns out both of them were, and our Juliana Goldman has been fact-checking the candidates. Juliana? Well, Scott, we took a closer look at claims that Senator Kane and Governor Pence made about Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, specifically on nuclear weapons. Over the course of the debate, Kane said a number of times that as Secretary of State, Clinton worked to eliminate Iran's nuclear weapons program. Let's listen to one of those times. She worked to deal with the Russians to reduce their chemical weapons stockpile. She worked a tough negotiation with nations around the world to eliminate the Iranian nuclear weapons program without firing a eliminate shot. Eliminate the Iranian nuclear weapons absolutely, program. Absolutely, without firing a shot. And instead of 175,000 American troops deployed overseas, we now have 15,000. Right. And the Iran nuclear deal, Scott, just freezes Iran's nuclear program. It does not eliminate it. Now, there was also disagreement over whether Trump has said that Saudi Arabia, Japan and South Korea should have nuclear weapons. Donald Trump believes that the world will be safer if more nations have nuclear weapons. He said Saudi Arabia should get them, Japan should get them, Korea should get them. And when he, when he was confronted with this and told, wait a minute, terrorists could get those, proliferation could lead to nuclear war. Here's what Donald Trump said, and I quote, go ahead, folks, enjoy yourselves. I'd love to hear Governor Pence tell me what's so enjoyable or comical about nuclear war.
Now, this does appear to be true, Scott. During a CNN town hall in March, Trump said, quote, we're better off if Japan protects itself, end quote, against a potential nuclear North Korea. And when he was pressed on whether South Korea and Saudi Arabia should have nuclear weapons, Trump said it's going to happen anyway. It's only a matter of time. Juliana Goldman holding the candidates to the truth. Juliana, thank you very much. Let's bring John Dickerson and Bob Schieffer into the conversation. Bob, you know, Elaine Quijano did a great job as the moderator, but it seemed at times the debate commission should have equipped her with a whip and a chair. Well, <laughs> I, I thought she did a, a magnificent job. I've been there, I've done that. It's not as easy as it looks, and uh, I thought Elaine came through and made all of us proud. I'm speaking, obviously, biased, but uh, I, I thought she did a great job. But, you know, this was a vice presidential debate. And if ever there has been a campaign about the two people at the top of the ticket, it is this campaign, this year more so than maybe yes, any time you want I this? can ever remember. Uh, they both tried to explain the guys at the top of the ticket, but in the end, it's about the guys at the top of the ticket. I don't think anything was settled here tonight, but this really sets the table for what's going to happen Sunday night when we have the next presidential debate. And John Dickerson, what struck you at the end of the evening? Well, I think it's uh, going to Bob's point. I mean, Tim Kaine seems so focused on that larger campaign that's going on, pressing the case repeatedly, constantly, constantly, to the point of basically losing on style points, there's no question, in terms of demeanor and behavior and the constant interruptions, trying to press uh, Governor Pence to, to you know, stand up for his, for his running mate. Uh, there were a number of times that Governor Pence uh, said that Donald Trump didn't say things that Donald Trump did say. And in the fact checking, you know, we know these debates, they go on on for several days after they've actually happened. Uh, and it was just so clear that the strategy from Tim Kaine was about keeping it all about Donald Trump and hoping that if he lost on style in the moment, they might win on the longer uh, debate that goes on after the, after the debate's over. the deep divide in this country is what was underlined tonight in, in this debate. I mean, if you're pro-choice, you, you can pick your champion tonight. If you're not for choice, you know where the other side stands on this. And I did not see either candidate, it seems to me, broaden the appeal uh, of, of their candidate. Uh, this is going to be decided later, not tonight. Bob Schieffer, John Dickerson, thank you, and we'll be right back. Welcome to the first and only vice presidential debate of 2016 between Senator Tim Kaine and Governor Mike Pence. I cannot believe that Governor Pence will defend the insult-driven campaign that Donald Trump has run. That's small potatoes compared to Hillary Clinton calling Senator half Kaine. of Donald Trump's supporters a basket of deplorables. When Hillary said you haven't been paying taxes, she said, that makes me smart. So it's smart not to pay for our military. It's smart not to pay for veterans. It's smart not to pay for teachers. And I guess all of us who do pay for those things, I guess we're stupid. Remember that Hillary Clinton had a private server in her home that had classified information right, on it about drone strikes, emails from the President of the United States of America were on there. Donald Trump can't start a Twitter war with Miss Universe without shooting himself in the foot. He loves dictators. He's got kind of a personal Mount Rushmore. Did you work on that one a long time? Because that had a lot of really creative lines in it. Well, I'm going to uh, see if you can look, defend any of it. Look, I can defend it.